giving her the throttle. We're moving. Oh, pushing his trailer sideways. Keep going, buddy. You can do it. Forget about that car. Just go. Well, good morning. Are you guys ready for a disaster of a day? Because that's what I think we got. A little cold out here. So let me explain what's going on. First of all, it's snowing. Second of all, last night I got a call from a, a fairly large motor club. Now I don't contract with any of the motor clubs because they're cheap and I'm not. But a lot of other people don't contract with them either, so they still call pretty often. What they told me was that they had a Pontiac Aztec, you know, a little SUV, that was up on top of Sanium Pass and uh, pulled over to put some snow chains on, got stuck in the snow, can't get going again, needed it winched out. Sure, I can do that. So I gave them a price. And they said, uh, we're gonna look around and we'll call you back. And like what happens nine times out of 10 with them, they never call back. So I forgot about it and went to bed. Then this morning, they call again for the exact same car, still stuck in the snow in the same spot. And because they wanted to be cheap, they left these people stranded on a mountain pass in a snowstorm, far from any sort of help, overnight. Not happy about that. So I let them know I wasn't happy about that. And I told them that they're gonna get people killed. Did you see what it looks like right here, right now? We are at about 3,000 feet elevation. It is snowing, everything's covered in ice, and it's 16 degrees outside. These people are up five, 6,000 feet elevation in the Cascade Mountains on the side of the road in a snowstorm, or got down about five, 10 degrees last night. Not cool. So I laid into the insurance people pretty hard, kind of chewed them up and down about it, told them that they're gonna get people killed because people do die in these situations. They didn't really care. I gave them the exact same price, which they said they were now okay with, and I gave them a two hour ETA, which they said was unacceptable. But here's the thing, I'm two hours away. I can't get there any faster, especially when it looks like this. I told them if they don't like the two hour ETA, they probably shouldn't call tow companies that are two hours away. I mean, science. So either way, they finally agreed to everything. And as you can see, I'm on the way. But when they finally sent over the email with all the customer's information and the job details, where it should have said, Pontiac Aztec. It said Freightliner Cascadia. Now I'm confused. But now with that email, for the first time, I finally have the customer's contact info. So I call them up. And yes, they're in a fully loaded Freightliner tractor trailer on top of the mountain pass. Just got a lot more interesting, didn't it? So I explained to the customer that I don't have any heavy duty wreckers. And if your 80,000 pound truck is buried in the snow, I can't help you. And he explained to me no one else can help them either. So after talking for a bit and realizing what their situation is, it sounds like they tried to put some tire chains on. One of the chains came off, got wrapped around the axle, and is jammed up, and that is their biggest problem. He does have extra chains, so he's thinking if we can get this one cut off and get the others put on, he should be able to continue on his own. Now hopefully that's the case, because as you can see, this isn't a heavy wrecker. This is a pickup. So I've got tools, cutoff wheels, enough stuff to repair chain links if I have to. And uh, we're gonna head up there and see what we can do to help this guy out. Oh, and look, it's a roundabout. up the mountain ways you can see all the little Subarus and cars with no snow chains on trying to pass everyone going up the hill while other people are coming down don't be dumb just get in line with everyone keep a safe distance and drive now everyone's like why would you have a sunroof in a tow truck well this is why isn't that awesome all right we found our guy that is a funny looking Pontiac Aztec. Let's go see what we can do here. A little more, a little more. 
Okay, hold on there. All right, you're off. These are the good chains too with the... Uh... Oh, that one broke, that's the problem. Yeah, just pull it down the flat. Okay, his chain broke and wound around the hub of the rim. So I got it untangled, got one new chain on. Go on this hill. So he's gonna try to move on his own. Chain. Yeah, it snapped the chain. Look at every link. The chains are breaking. So it wasn't anything you did wrong the first time. The chains, I just watched them come right apart. All right, we got the chain off the tire. He's going to back off of them. I got an idea. These are the double rail chains. I'm going to cut apart the broken piece from this brand new one we just put on. Good! and the broken one right there, and I'm gonna make two good single rail chains. If you can't hear, it's because I took the microphone off this camera so I don't ruin it, all this snow. So let's go make some chains on the side of the road. Okay, there's one chain. All right, we cut up his old chains and made some new ones. Um, I don't think he's gonna be able to get going on his own right here still without breaking them again, because he's cheap chains. So I'm gonna get behind his truck, use the wheels on the back of my truck to push him and get him moving up the hill and then he can just go hopefully from there. So that's what we're gonna try. Okay, so I'm butted up to his underride bar right here. This can swivel and move, it has to. He's getting his broken chains put away and I'm gonna push like hell in reverse and get him rolling and then he can just take off and hopefully keep climbing up the hill. It is cold! Okay, we're giving her the throttle. We're moving. Oh, pushing his trailer sideways. But we're going. Oh yeah. And I'm gonna stop. And off he goes. Keep going, buddy. You can do it. Forget about that car. Just go. Oh, man. All right, let me suck that wheel lip back in. You going to straighten out? Uh, if it's turned too far, it won't straighten when I suck it in. There he goes. We did it! Okay, let's uh, see if we can get down the mountain. Alright, we're turned around and going. It looks like him right there taking it easy. Man, I really need a cameraman. Because uh, that would probably been a really cool shot to get from the outside of my truck, pushing that truck up the hill backwards. I even pushed this trailer sideways so I pushed a little too hard. I'm surprised how much grip I actually got. but. But yeah, I don't have a cameraman, so you just had to watch the cameras on the truck just like I did. All right, we are to the bottom of the first hill he had to go down right next to that Lost Lake again. I'll follow him to make sure he makes it because he's got one more hill to climb, which is the big one. And then we gotta go down the other side. My lips are so frozen, I can't even talk right. Super cool. That poor guy and his wife spent all night right there on the side of the road waiting for someone to come help him not ideal okay he's just about to start up the hill and hopefully those chains hold up 
If not, he's screwed. Okay, we're probably on the steepest part of the climb right now, getting up close to the summit. He made it around the sharp turn and the pull out of that. Looks like all his chains are still attached. But he's doing a good job keeping his momentum up so that it doesn't put too much pressure on those chains trying to spin them and move that load. But he's doing a good job of keeping his momentum up so that he's not trying to lay into the throttle too hard and spin those chains and risk breaking them. So he's hauling a load of Red Bull into bend. And it turns out Red Bull gives you wings, but it doesn't give you traction. Home stretch. This is the last climb before we're up on the summit. He's going to make it. Unlike this guy who didn't make it. Actually, it looks like he's throwing his trailer chains back on before he heads down the hill. That's it. We're on the summit. So it's all flat here for a little bit and then down the other side. So he is home free as long as he doesn't, you know, slide off the road going down the other side, but he should be fine. All right, so we made it back to the bottom of the mountain. We got the tire chains off and uh, our customer already went down the highway done. He's got his chains off. Good to go. So now for a little recap of what happened. I got called for a Pontiac Aztec. Turned out to be a fully loaded semi. Uh, I got told I just need a little winch out. Turns out his chains were broke and wrapped all up around his axle and he was locked up right where he sat. So got the chains unwound. Snowstorm started blasting down on us. I cut apart his old chains, made up some new chains out of the pieces of the old ones, got them wrapped up. Super cheap chains likely to break again. So instead of having him try to go and risk spinning those chains and having them break again on that hill, I backed up to him with my wheel lift and pushed him up the hill. And then once he was moving, I backed off and let him go. Then I followed him down the hill, came back here, took my chains off, watched him go by with his chains off. All good. So that's the end of it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one.